A critical moment today for the NTSB as they race to find out what led up to the Francis Scott Key Bridge disaster. The agency plans to interview the two pilots aboard the cargo ship at the time of the crash, hoping to piece together the final moments. This comes as divers recovered two bodies in the water with four others presumed dead. They were part of a group of workers filling potholes when the bridge collapsed. The NTSB is now moving from a recovery effort to a cleanup operation, giving divers the access they need where the other victims are believed to be. But as cleanup begins, federal officials press it could take years to rebuild Baltimore's landmark, putting a spotlight back on America's aging infrastructure. Across the country, one in three bridges need to be repaired or entirely replaced. Maryland alone needs to fix nearly 1,600 bridges. Joining us live is infrastructure policy expert Rick Geddes. He's also the director of Cornell University's infrastructure policy program. Rick, one of the questions I have for you right off the top is that I understand that when the Keys Bridge was built, it was not built to withstand this kind of infra uh, impact uh, to its infrastructure, uh, but no bridges at that time were. Yeah, that's that's a great point, Nick. Um, the, the design was probably occurring in, in the early uh, 70s, 70, 74, 75. It came into service in 1977. And, uh, you know, that's not super old in terms of uh, U.S. bridge terms. Uh, but the ships in those days uh, were much smaller. It was sort of Panamax type size ships. Uh, largely the ships going into the port of Baltimore were constrained by the size of the locks in the Panama Canal. And infrastructure people like myself follow the uh, development of the new locks at the Panama Canal, which are much larger. Uh, a rule of thumb, maybe it's crude, but that the, the size of the container ships have roughly tripled uh, since that so time. So I think with all due respect to the designers and constructors of the uh, 1977 Francis Scott Key Bridge, they probably didn't contemplate ships with just the size and the mass of container ships and other types of ships like car carriers uh, that we have today. Rick, talk to us about infrastructure because I know that that will be a key focus when this bridge is rebuilt, uh, one that focuses on redundancy, uh, one that focuses on uh, different points of impact so that the entire thing doesn't go down. In layman terms, explain to us why that's important. Well, it's it's important because you, don't, you try to avoid, obviously, catastrophic uh, failures like this, uh, Nick, and there, there's different ways to do that. One are uh, fenders, they're called fenders, just like kind of bumpers on your car uh, that will fend off large ships. Uh, and those could be made of, of rocks or concrete that are that are in the water near the piers that the actual, the load bearing piers that the bridge sits on. So that would be one way we could make it more resilient, resilient or have it redundant, as you say, uh, to approaching ships that might be out of control. Uh, like the ships, there's other ways you, you can do it to make the uprights uh, just stronger so that they're able to take uh, more of an impact. And designs, of course, uh, would, would I almost certainly will be different than this sort of cage. You see that structural cage construction that was on the top of the bridge. My guess is the new design would be more like the Tappan Zee Bridge or the new New York Bridge or the Mario Cuomo Bridge that we have north of where I'm, uh, north of New York City. And that's cable, uh, cable uh, uh, upholding the, the roadway that is, is a very different type of construction. So there's all these things that can be done to make a bridge today, a uh, long time since 1977, more resilient to these types of impacts. I have lived in places where bridges have been the center of focus. Uh, uh, one while in Arkansas, the bridge between Arkansas and Tennessee. You'll remember when that was closed down for a while. I've also lived in Boston when uh, the suspension bridge was uh, uh, put in place there and in the Bay Area where we have the Bay Area Bridge uh, where uh, it crosses right. between San Francisco and, and Oakland. Uh, why are those right. suspension bridges uh, a better direction now and can that be something that would be used uh, over the Bay here in, uh, in, in, in Baltimore? I think it can, Nick. Again, I don't. Well, I'm an economist by training and not a civil engineer, um, so so I don't want to speak out of school here. But both the Go the new Gothels Bridge and the Tappan Zee Bridge are that type of cable stay construction where you have these um, angled uh, uh, towers, really that are that are quite attractive that hold up the roadway, and you can inspect those cables easily. You may know that the, the uh, Mirandi Bridge in Genoa, Italy, they had cables, but they were encased in concrete. 
and they were difficult to inspect. But these types of cables that we're seeing, you know, on Tappan Zee and the new Gothels Bridge are, are much easier to inspect and, the, and they can um, be made coated with things to keep them uh, resilient. Even though there's brackish water, obviously, around this that contains salt, which is corrosive, that is that is all going to be taken into account in the new design. And I think the designs like that, those cable bridges are, are better in many ways. Rick Jettys, once again, I want to thank you so much for joining us and helping us get a little perspective on what we're seeing and why our infrastructure needs serious attention. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.